Welcome to On Common Ground with Dusty Key. Today, I have an extremely special guest that I have known forever. Um, and I want to give you a little bit of bio about her. This is the one and only Becky Rue. She is a certified holistic health coach uh, and a Greensboro, North Carolina native for 41 years. Um, she is... Um, she teaches people to incorporate natural solutions, including essential oils, clean eating, and creative movement into her, their lives better to support health and well-being. Becky receives her training at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York City, the world's largest nutrition school, and is a diamond leader with doTERRA International, the world's largest essential oil company. She is in love with the personal healing journey she's been on uh, and is committed to inspiring and supporting others to find their own path of healing. Um, I think that that is, uh, there are some things about, uh, our, our guest, but not all this person has a aura about her an energy about her that when she goes about her life, just, uh, mystifies and makes people feel an incredible positive energy and makes them feel really great about themselves and who they are. And I've seen this happen over just years and years, and I've seen a, a huge journey um, with Becky. So but without further ado, let's welcome Becky to On Common Ground with Dusty Keen. How are you doing, Becky? So, so good. You are so coming to us from the Virgin Islands, which we just yesterday got uh, off the island from and, uh, and, and headed back home and we're doing this podcast now, but I can see behind you just how gorgeous it is. I already miss it. <laughs> it's it happy. already misses you. <laughs> <laughs> and you are here, you are there on your front porch. This is like the porch that, that this is your view from your uh, porch. And just a piece of it. It's actually like even bigger. Like you can see the whole thing uh, from your porch, which is amazing. Probably one of the best views, uh, arguably, that you can find anywhere. And you are there right now, uh, present with me. And I want to talk a little bit about how you became that. On the show, we do interviews with people who are thought leaders in the industry, people who provoke thought, people who are living their dream, um, artists of all types, uh, people who are into the health and well-being of others, and, and hopefully informing people on how they can better um, you know, make their lives what they want and, and create a world that makes them truly happy. So with all that being said, you know, it's taken, you didn't just arrive there by accident. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of things happened in your life to lead you to where you're at right now. And I guess, you know, let's talk a little bit about your journey and what brought you to, to where you are today. Mm, yes. I mean, it's obviously a long story <laughs> and you might notice a little scratchy voice that might have something to do with the last four days. <laughs> <laughs> it, was fun. it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. And, and I think that's actually key, right? So I still have to incorporate some fun and letting my hair down every now and then, but for sure the last um, probably 15 years of my life have been beautifully orchestrated, sometimes consciously, a lot of times not um, fully divinely led but a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of old stories that led me to uh, seeking for something more and something deeper. And um, so I have been definitely on a personal healing journey for a lot of years, 15, probably 20 years of personal growth and development that really started as a result of old trauma, old family stories, old, uh, you know, definitely kind of that old DNA that I'm learning to rewrite, old neural pathways that I'm learning to rewrite. And I started literally by running. I mean, that's the truth. And I tell people all the time, I feel like I wanted to run from my life for a lot of years. You know, I was doing all of the things. I was working in corporate America. I was a married mother with a mortgage and all of the things and trying to kind of aspire and reach and develop this, like what our culture has told us is what is success. And so I did all of the things for so many years and I felt so empty, honestly. I felt um, like I was always looking for something more and I felt like I was a freaking, I mean, true story. Like I kind of felt like I was selling out and like I had to put my costume on to go out into the world each day to perform you know, and to do the things. And there were so many years that I just was like, why, why am I doing this? Why do I keep doing this? And an opportunity presented itself probably 
seven years ago where the company, the uh, logistics company I was working for was shutting their corporate headquarters where I worked and um, offered me to either move up to DC to their corporate or take a severance package. And at that time I uh, was already doing my training at Institute for Integrative Nutrition um, because my personal journey had taught me the importance of feeding my body well and the difference of what happened when I fed myself food that actually nourished me. I had enough energy then to like get up in the morning and go for a walk or go for a run or do a little yoga. And as I was learning to do those things, I was finding that the depression and anxiety that I had dealt with the majority of my adult life was lessening. And so I was interested, right? So I started doing this uh, training at Institute for Integrative Nutrition with the intention of becoming a holistic health coach to work with individuals to help them on that path as well, right? I wanted to help other people find the path that I was discovering. And as that happened, I stumbled upon essential oils, which took me down a whole nother journey we'll get to um, for sure. But it has just been a deepening in and a deepening in. And I, uh, about a, just over a year ago, um, had another opportunity in my life where I was like, huh, it's time to move. And for the last five years, as you know, I've been um, uh, working with doTERRA as a leader with essential oils and teaching people how to incorporate essential oils into their life. And that opportunity has just opened so many doors for me and um, opened this one. <laughs> um, I mean, I'd always wanted to live in St. John. I've always been called to the Virgin Islands. My kid graduated from high school. I had a re very significant relationship end and my life opened up and I was like, well, what's next? So here I am <laughs> after a long journey and continue. I mean, the journey continues just because I'm here does not mean, you know, I certainly am, don't expect to ever arrive. I will always be a student and always learning. And I just happen to be doing it in a really beautiful place now that lets me breathe a little bit more than the culture that we come from. So ultimately, you know, yes, food, exercise, spiritual groundedness and connection, um, supporting our bodies with natural solutions, being connected to mother nature. These are all really important things to me. And the people that I work with today are all people who are interested in seeking more information and in their own path. And um, so that's what I get to do today. I just happen to get to do it from a really lovely place. Yeah, you know, and, and getting there took uh, something that we'll talk about a little bit. You know, you talked about, you felt like you were sort of putting on a costume or, or wearing a mask out every day in your life. And I think that maybe touching on some of the things that people deal with who are in that space now, who would love to be sitting on a porch in the Virgin Islands or would love to be able to say to themselves when they look in the mirror, hey, I'm doing what I think I'm supposed to do. I'm doing what, uh, I'm fulfilling a purpose that I, that, that for my life that I've identified and that's, that's what I'm in love with doing. Um, but they, they are not there because they're literally taking the time that they have right now um, and they're using it in a different direction that they're not happy with. And I meet a lot of people who are in that space and they ask me, you know, how do you, how do you get out of it? How do you live free like you do and, and are able to do the things that you want to do? Um, and I think that a lot of that has to do with um, courage and a way that where, you know, I talk to a lot of people and say, well, if you have this, this place that you want to be or this home that you want to live in or whatever it may be, and you live where you are currently, you can't have that unless you leave what you have. In order to get what you want, you have to let go of what you have um, and understand that you know maybe we are just all passing through, so it's okay. And starting to build the building blocks of courage within people to have that, which is needed to make that jump or make that transition in their life to do what their purpose calls them for. Because I do believe we are all called for something. We are all really brilliant people. We're all really talented people in very different ways. 
um, and can we can use that together to achieve something magnificent? And I don't think as a society, we are doing that very well because of the things that we are achieving and the things that our focus is on it isn't those things. We can really progress uh, a lot farther into exploration of all kinds of things uh, that we're not doing for a million different reasons. But individually, we can do this and we don't have to wait for the collective to get on board and sort of filter it down to us. We can begin now. And there's a lot of things I know that you do that have changed my life that I'm beginning to do, such as meditation. Uh, I've not yet got into really the yoga element, but I know that you're really, really big into that and, uh, and oils and medicines and food and all of those things that help you energize yourself and help you become this person that you want to be. But really, you know, gaining the courage to do it is something that it's hard to teach someone uh, because you can tell them just do it. And yet you wouldn't be where you are right now unless you just did it. Like you wouldn't, you know, you got to fucking do it. And without doing that, you don't get where you are. So, and, and, and really having people understand that when you just do it, there is nothing to fear, mm. right? On the other side of it, there is the things that you want. And while things will always be challenging, it's not going to be just a walk in the rose garden, but they, it will be okay. And not only that, but the learning that comes from that is huge because then your confidence increases to continue to do the things and continue to move and to jump and to do the things where you're felt led by your feelings and by what your intuition from what all the things you've learned at that moment are telling you. And to deny that uh, just makes this sort of huge population of people that aren't happy and they don't feel fulfilled and they know deep down inside themselves that there's something more within them. There's a greater purpose they could be achieving for themselves. And so for you, how were you able to conjure that sort of uh, confidence to make the moves that you have? Yeah, I mean, it's such a, you're, all of the things you just said are so spot on. It's so true. I mean, so the first thing that came up for me is, you know, the old idiom, feel the fear and do it anyway, right? So there's all these like little quotes and people love like scrolling Insta and all the social media and getting all this inspiration and reading quotes is great. And we all, the reason they're, they are, they become quotes is because they speak to our inner truth, Right. And it resonates with the collective, as you referred to, right? There's this thing that we're like, yes, yes, yes to that, right? So feel the fear and do it anyway is definitely a huge part of what started this journey for me. But the truth of the matter is, you know, you were talking about courage and it definitely requires courage. But to me, the biggest part of this is faith. This is the biggest part, it's faith. And, and for me, when the opportunity came, so, I mean, I am not one to like wax poetic and pretend like I'm like, just kick back, sipping on like tropical drinks at the beach all the time and never like shit. So a lot of the time, but I mean, definitely I'm enjoying life, but right. there's also a lot of fear and a lot of growth that continues to happen. And there's a lot of things that I continue to step through. But the very first time was that, that decision. So we all have this inner knowing, we all have this intuition and this understanding, right? When something happens and an opportunity presents itself, and sometimes it's a challenge that presents itself, oftentimes our intuition will always guide us to what our truth is and what we know to be the answer for ourselves. But so many times our, our brain and our cultural conditioning is um, in it's kind of the opposite, right? So our intuition might say, do this, but culture and the world around us says, oh, no, 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 that's not smart. That's not the right thing to do. That's not prudent. Do this instead. So I believe most people are following what they have been taught, right? It's all the brain. It's what we've heard. This is what success is. This is what it looks like. So when my company shut its doors and I lost my job, and I had an opportunity to either move to continue traditional employment, or I had a continued uh, an opportunity to take a teeny little severance. So I'm not talking like crazy amounts of money that made me feel really comfortable. It was just enough to make me go, I can pay my mortgage for six months. 
that was it. I didn't have any savings. I didn't have any cushioning. I didn't have, right? It was not like, oh, shoot, great. I'm going to start doing this now. It was a hell of a risk. And what I did before I made the decision and called the company to say yes or yay or nay, I spent three days in my little townhouse, literally just saying, please show me the path and give me the courage to walk it. Show me the path and give me the courage to walk it. Show me the path and give me, it was just like this constant, like, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing, but I didn't feel the courage. And, and I had enough of a, of a, I saw enough of an opportunity to jump and just start working with clients on an individual basis in a holistic health coaching setting, right? And I just literally, you guys, I started my business on Facebook. I remember the very first post that was like, hey, I'm still in training. I'm like nine months into the certification program. I'm loving what I'm learning with holistic health coaching. If anybody's interested in working with a holistic health coach, hit me up. And I did that at the beginning of that weekend that I sat in prayer and meditation and stillness and quiet and asking for guidance. And at the end of the weekend, I got back on, I looked and there was like, ding, 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 enough people. It wasn't hundreds. It wasn't so comfortable that I was like, oh, cool. I'll be good. I was just like, well, there's some signs, right? There are people that are saying yes, interested in working with you. And so I made the call and I said, I'm not coming back. And everybody in my life was like, Becky, you're putting your resume back out there, right? Like, what are you going to do next? And I was like, I'm going to start my own business. And everybody's like, well, you don't know anything about how to start your own business. I'm like, I'll figure it out. You know, anyone fine. when they start their first business, right? I mean, they, like, you know, like, they right. So yeah. I'll figure it out. And there was enough. And, and I am, I will just say this. I'm actually really grateful for the opportunity to say this out loud. Like so grateful for those people at the very beginning who were like, yeah, I would love to work with you. Yes. I would love to work with you. Yes. I would love, because it gave me the confidence to, to move forward in the, on the path I was supposed to be moving forward on. It also gave me experience to start building muscle and learning about what it's like to actually be a holistic health coach. And that's what led me to doTERRA and essential oils. But the thing is, is if I wouldn't have taken that first jump, if I wouldn't have taken that leap initially, there was no, there was no, so I hear this all the time. People are always like, I don't have a cushion. And I'm like, Right, you can, you don't get a cushion until you create a cushion, right? right. Like, I'm like, I didn't have a cushion either. I mean, I didn't. It's faith, and and it's also um, this that internal knowing that in the last six years, I am so clear that it has never led me astray. You know, it's why I'm here. It's like I just keep following the signs, and and I think there's so much of us in our culture that's just like. We are, we are taught to, to almost like outsource our wisdom, right? We give our power away to the professionals and to the experts and to the, y'all, we're the fucking experts on our own life. Like we yeah. know. And as soon as we tap into that, and as soon as we tap into our inner knowing, it's like, oh, and yeah. the path continues to unfold. And we sometimes still get scared as the path continues to unfold. I mean, when I sold all of my worldly possessions before I moved here, it was scary as fuck. Now, oh. it, and you, now you don't regret a minute of it, I'm sure. And so I want to kind of unpack a little bit of that because you said a lot. So you did. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, it, it, a lot of it's important. Um, oh, one second. I'm just going to have a sip of this delicious ground coffee. <laughs> Um, sorry, trying to uh, slide a little bit of marketing in there, but um, no. So going back, you know, I, I think to one thing um, that I'll, I'll relate to what you said. While I was walking on the beach in beautiful St. John recently, um, there was a baby who was literally in the water, and uh, the baby could stand up, and the, the the little baby took its first steps, and I was able to witness that, right? And so the baby literally, you know, went like four or five steps right to the dad, right, and the dad was right there with his hands out. Right. And I think about that in context of things and, and, and educating ourselves on exactly what you're talking about within this courage. We don't know that we can walk until we do. 
and we can't run until we walk. And a lot of us think about the fact that we want to run, but that doesn't come before learning to walk and it doesn't become before that thing. So we're all innately built naturally to make these progressions in life, to do these things that we are afraid of or we don't know that we can do. And that little baby, the look on that baby's face when it had just pow, 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 and arrived at the arms of the father and everybody around that got to witness that, particularly the mom and the dad were so proud. It was such a loving moment that that that's what happens when you take that move of, of whether it's faith or courage or whatever it is that you built to do that, right? But there are people that you said came out of the woodworks when you did make that jump that were there to help you, just like this father's arms were there for that child. They wasn't going to let the baby down, right? And I know that in my life, if anyone reaches out to me and wants to learn anything that I've uh, that I've acquired knowledge-wise or experientially, I love nothing more than trying to to, to, to help. And so it's almost obligatory for us to to also reach out the hand because it was done for us the information is out there with so many people trying to teach this and one thing you hit on i think is you know when you you have to, to to believe you can do it and have the courage you can do it and that also comes down to something i hit on a lot you know i'm writing a book called be do you have and and part of that is is being and the first simple part of that is what you think about from the moment your eyes open and that can dictate the course of your life and who shows up in it so with you saying you have to follow the signs those signs appear particularly to you to people who are looking in the direction for those signs if you spend your life walking down the street and all you're doing is looking down in this little small circumference and watching your feet move ahead of each other you're missing the fact that there's the most beautiful tapestry you could ever imagine above you that's moving at this incredibly calming pace and will put your your mind at a different creative space and so what you think about is so important and i think that gratitude beginning with that is the most important kind of vibration that you can put yourself on as soon as you open your eyes boom oh god i'm thankful you know look at this and that begins to build on itself and that begins to make you feel really good if you start to just say the word yes that makes you feel good. If you say, yes, I'm really thankful that I can move, right? That I can smell, that I can see, whatever it is, these things start to build and in, well up inside of you. And then when you move about the world, that energy transfers and people can feel that. And then these things begin to open up for you because you're carrying this frequency with you. And that's a small step, I think, for people to realize that they can practice right now and it costs you absolutely nothing uh, to do. So, absolutely. you know, step one can, can begin to be that. And then you begin like, you know, when you and then asking is huge. You know, if you don't ask for what you want, you usually do not get it. Uh, you know, I'm an employer and, and I don't unless an employee comes to me most times and says, hey, I think that I'm more valuable than, than I'm getting paid today or this. And they give me a reason why. Then I may, you know, absolutely consider giving them more for what they're doing, right? But because they asked me, because right. otherwise, you know, and so when you were doing that, when you were sitting in your, your you know, townhouse and you were asking, you were saying, hey, I, I want this or I want to be shown what is the next move for me. And I'm looking now. So I think that's important for people to do as well is ask and then go out with the expectation of seeing and receiving the answer that they're looking for, you know? Yeah, totally. No question. And circling back to what you were talking about, about gratitude and how easy it is to practice it. It's free and it's easy, right? Easy. The foundation of everything that I do, everything that I do. It came from a book that it's called The Slight Edge. Um, you know, it is what slight it is. Edge. The Slight Edge. Yeah, I can't remember the dude's name who wrote it. Um, but he, uh, it's a really simple book. So the, the premise of it is what makes our life, what helps us create the life that we vision is... Um, making the decision to do things that are just as simple to do as they are not to do. So we're not talking earth shattering, humongous, you know, actions and behaviors. It is the decision to be grateful, to wake up every morning and choose gratitude or to wake up every morning and carve out 10 minutes to breathe 
to wake up every morning and tap into what we want to create for that day and, and choose oils to put in my diffuser that are um, supportive of that, right? To drink a full glass of water, to take the supplements that really support my physical body. It's really, really, really easy to do all of those things. It's also really, really, really easy to not do them. And, and, and what we build this life on is making the decision to do those easy things that support us and create an, creating an entire toolbox that supports ourselves. And your toolbox is going to look different than my toolbox. It's going to look different than Michelle's toolbox. It's going to look right. It's going to, all of our toolboxes are going to be look different. I mean, there may be some, you know, mainstays, like we all need good, clean water and we all need to have a good, good, clean, healthy gut. And we all need to breathe deeply and all of these things. But you know, like you're into martial arts. I'm into yoga. I, who's to say that you should be doing yoga and I should be doing martial arts. Martial arts is what speaks to your body. Yoga is what speaks to mine, you know? And so I think all of this, all of this conversation to me is, is so much about making simple decisions and small changes, like integral, like very small baby step changes that it's really been over a course of 20 years that my life has completely shifted, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Completely. And it's because, and law, of sure, little, yeah. it's because of little t teeny changes. And I still am working on new tools. Like I still need more tools. I will always, I am so curious about this life. There's so much to learn, you know? And, and to me, partnering with people as you're talking about like the gratitude for the people who showed up then I'm also I'm thankful for so many people who have showed up for support with me and I do feel a sense of um, really deep calling to continue to show up for people who are ready for someone to show up for them Right. And you know, what's really exciting uh, for, for us and for anyone that's at whatever level they're at is that you need the new tools when you get to the, the next place. Wow. And we're always moving to the next place. I mean, once you begin doing certain things that you see change in your life and you're able to identify it, like, wow, this is something, um, then you, you, then there's, there's just more and more and more and more. It's never ending. And that's the beautiful thing about it. I mean, I think, you know, for all of us, you know, may, it may be that we have an existence, <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, we have an existence that is, uh, there's Michelle crawling. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. <laughs> oh, we didn't that, notice. <laughs> it was like, wow. Oh, but we have a, you know, an existence that is, it, it may be forever, right? So, um, you know, the things that we, we do that we feel that makes us feel good, that we move on, um, that leads to other things that make us feel good that we move on that just just continue to add to this greater and greater person greater and human being that we are um, even uh, if when we're no longer human beings and we're something else who knows but uh, I think that these things that we build and we do every day that that build this uh, will will continue to 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 have um, not only, awesome you know uh, examples of our life of what is possible that we didn't think was before but um it is something that at the very moment helps you as well so there are things that when you do this when you drink that glass of water or you put in that oil which we're going to get to or uh for me man meditation i think has just and i'm so new at this but i mean i had to have found nothing that is more impactful in my life and it started the first day I began to do it and get it like the very first thing I was like, whoa, you know, and then day two and then day three. So it just builds and builds and builds. And then you can feel the fact that the God, there's like a world in this I haven't even discovered yet, but I know that just to the small piece that I've done in the past month, it's had an incredible impact in my life. And it's something that I now say to myself, man, I enjoy doing this more than anything else. I look forward to meditating every day more than I do almost anything else in my life. And, yeah. and, and I think that's, what's going to happen when people begin to do the little things that you're talking about, they'll enjoy it. And, and that's the big thing because they can choose not to, but I think they'll, they'll choose more too when they just begin and they'll enjoy it because they'll see this immediate benefit. You know, you get up, you drink a glass of water, you put something in your mind that inspires you, that makes you think, 
uh, and then you, you're thinking thoughts of gratitude before you get out of bed. And then I guess the next step is what you're going to put in your body for that day that's going to help you feel uh, better based on the way you feel at the moment, because that's ever changing. And that's something I think that you are uh, an expert in that a lot of people may or may not know about is with these essential oils. And when you break it down, for me, what so seems what seems so very, very logical about what you do is that the oil is the essence. It's the essence. It's the most powerful concentrate of anything that we can extract and put together. So our body oils, our, uh, you know, the oil from, let's say, you know, you're a big pot smoker. If you get down to where you're smoking the oils, man, that's a whole other world than smoking some flour or whatever, or ingesting the oils of CBD. And that, you know, so oils have been something that, that this extract in this process, which you know so much about having visited farms and seeing uh, what happens uh, with this whole process and the integrity that is behind getting this for people that they can use. And there's so many of them that to become knowledgeable in the way that you are and to use them in the way that you do really helps you continue your sort of supernatural journey of becoming a better and better person. Because as things happen in your life, a certain mood that you may feel, you have something that you can reach in your bag and grab and say, you know, if I apply this, it's going to seep into my skin. It's going to get into my blood and it is going to absolutely have an effect. And when you know how to use that, I'd say logically, it absolutely will have an effect on your life and positively if you know how to use them. So in my naive understanding of it, um, I'd love sort of for you to, to talk a little bit about how that's changed your life. And I see you, you know, in, in life when, when, you know, when people are around you, this isn't something that you just talk about. This is something that you're using all the time, every day. Uh, in fact, we, uh, uh, I guess one of the masks that we had on the island was came back with us and Michelle put it on. She's like, wow, I know Becky wore this because I can smell the oils in it. Right. But you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, the, it's really powerful stuff. And so I know that that's something that you really have spent a lot of time of, uh, in your life learning about and focusing on. And, uh, you know, so fire away at anything that you want to share about that. So beautiful. I mean, yes, oils have been, um, you know, for lack of a better term right now, kind of the gasoline that was thrown on an already existing fire for me. Like I was already on fire from the, in the holistic health coaching world, like really, really understanding how we feed our body and how we move our body and how we spiritually connect each of these things have been practices. So like, as you were talking about meditation, what I was thinking about is I really do look at everything that I do in my life as a practice. So yoga started is a practice. Meditation is a practice using oils as a practice, feeding my body well as a practice, all of these things. It doesn't mean, you know, I ever, I, that I'm a master at any of them and, and oils fall into that same scope for me. When I started using oils, um, it was probably six months into my health coaching practice. So I was still really, really new at learning how to work with individuals, but we were working on things like, you know, weight issues or migraines or hormonal imbalances or depression, anxiety, sleep issues, all of the things that traditional Americans honestly are dealing with on a pretty much daily basis. Daily, it's a right, very yeah. common thing, right? So from the health coaching perspective, we were looking at making a decision of like, okay, how do we start addressing this? You know, if it's sleep, that's the issue. We were addressing uh, behavioral changes before bedtime, right? And throughout the day. So like stress management things throughout the day, we were looking at diet, we're looking at all of these things. So as I started playing with oils myself personally, I had a really, really profound experience early on. Like I had used oils probably since we were 18, like a little bit here and there. Like I, you know, I knew lavender was good to help with sleep and I knew tea tree was good for acne, right? Or pimples, which I definitely dealt with a lot of, you know, through my younger years. So like I knew little bits and pieces about essential oils, but I didn't understand the scope with which and the power with which they were able to show up and present. So I start like bringing oils into my health coaching practice because I had had this um, injury to my hamstring 
that kept me from running for six months. And I had rested, I'd used Arnica, I used heat, I used cold, I did all the things. And I was tempted and getting ready to go to a doctor to see if, you know, what my next step was. And somebody was like, hey, you can use lemongrass. Lemongrass is really good for t connective tissue. So maybe that would help. So I used a little lemongrass just topically right on the area did it consistently for five days. And within a few days, I was literally lacing my shoes up and able to start walking again. And I was like, hmm, feel pretty good. So I start jogging and I was like, what the actual fuck? I mean, this had been like six days, of, I mean, six months of injury where I could not move my body. And I use running to address depression issues, right? So I use my, like my physical body to address what's happening in my emotional and my brain, right? And I couldn't do it. That was a big deal. And I could feel myself starting to kind of spiral into depression. So when I started using that lemongrass and was able to run again, I was like, maybe it's a fluke, right? Which is what most people think when they start using oils, like, ah, and then, you know, you hear a lot of like placebo effect or, you know, all of these different things. And I was working with people who were dealing with physical things. So I was like, Hey, if you're willing to use some oils, I'll hook you up with some, you know, send you home with some and try them. And let's talk about, about them at your next session. Consistently across the board, every single person who I gave oils to for sleep, for weight, for the headaches, migraines, all of these things were coming back to sessions. All they wanted to talk about was essential oils. And so I learned how, and I kind of lived my entire life moving with where the energy goes. So the energy was moving in the direction of essential oils. So I was using and learning and sharing more and more and more. And as I was learning and continue to, I still hear stories every single day in my essential oil community of people who have used oils in a way I've never used, I didn't know was possible. You know what? Like I didn't, I haven't experienced but they're like, oh, I just used this oil for this. And I'm like, so cool. I mean, these, these oils, I mean, it's plant medicine. And, and the, the crux of everything that I'm about is that we are all one. We are all of the same thing. You know, we are all of the earth. And ultimately, this earth has given us every single thing we've ever needed. It provides everything for us. It provides water. It provides food. It provides medicine. And, and our ancestors have been using this medicine forever. And so then this whole big, I am not an anti-Western medicine person. I'm really, really grateful for what we have access to. I just think we happen to be a little bit too dependent on it, right? And, and that what's happened over the course of even like, you know, some things you can, you can, if you began preventatively, you know, taking some of the things that you're talking about, then it wouldn't get to a need of, of Western, Western, uh, you know, intervention, cutting you open, you know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. And so to me, this isn't rocket, you know, one of my favorite, one of my partners, business partners says all the time, this isn't rocket surgery. And it's <laughs> not. It's not rocket surgery. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is when I use frankincense to ground in before I show up to speak or to do, you know, teach a workshop or lead a whatever I'm doing, I use it literally by taking a drop and in, inhaling it three times, long, deep breaths. It grounds me, it slows me. I put it right on the back of my neck for it goes straight to the like, seriously straight to the part of our brain that is like calming everything down and allowing us to be centered and grounded there are so many benefits to them and so to, yes you're 100 percent right i mean i feel like you know if people could just like see how i live just just come see a day you know and see how i start with the oils i use them throughout the day there's not really like it's, there's not like a lot of fanfare about it. I have my oils with me. I, you know, get a bug bite. I put some lavender on to make the itch stop. I don't even talk about it. It's just like part of my life. But what's so beautiful is watching all of the people. So, I mean, doTERRA is 9 million people strong across the world. So this is not like some little small, you know, subset of people that are, there are tons of people who are moving into plant medicine and more holistic approaches. And and I love talking about all of that stuff. What is incredibly uh, exciting to me is that what has happened for me in the last couple of years is I have teams of people who are still talking about those things with other people and teaching them about how to use the oils all the time. 
but doTERRA has proven to be uh, um, almost like a pathway to spiritual uh, deepening and to my spiritual growth and on so many different levels. I mean, there are so many, it's just a collective awakening happening right now. And and the oils, I believe, energetically have definitely contributed to it. I mean, everything's energy, right? And so I'm using these oils on a regular basis that are constantly up-leveling my energetic output, right? And what I'm able to, to bring to the world. And it's not just me. It's the whole leadership of doTERRA. All of the doTERRA leaders that I see, we all vibe at the same level. We are all creating and wanting and visioning the healing of this world. And so, you know, people are like, oh, that's so cute. And that's so whatever. And I'm like, and it's actually true too, you know? And the reason so many people are moving into it is because that truth vibrates at the center of all of us. So the oils are a huge part of it. There's no question. Well, and you've also taken it further. Like you've not just used the oils and seen, you know, like from the, the bottles that you get and, and teach the classes on how to use them. And from what, you know, your vast knowledge is, is uh, for the things that you do know to use them for that are effective and where to put them and how to ingest them. But you've actually gotten the, the privilege of going to the farms, meeting the farmers of the plants that the oil is sourced from, and that's taking you all over the world. And so I, I think that that, you know, may help people understand a little bit too, is that you're not just getting a package in the mail and going, okay, this is what you do. Um, you've actually, you know, gotten your, your hands in the soil uh, of where these plants are done. And, and like, so what were some of the experiences of that and how did that sort of help you um, in your understanding of what you do? so beautiful it was it, like this time last year right like today last year i was in kenya and i went with a small group of leaders from doTERRA and a couple of our owners um and we went to um several different farms actually where we sourced geranium tea tree oil i got to see lang lang sourced in the ground um and literally got to see it's tricky it's really i'm glad you asked this question because people don't understand what goes into essential oils. You know, I mean, people are like, oh yeah, I got some oils at Target or ordered some stuff off Amazon or whatever. And I'm like, it's tricky because 99% of the time, those oils are not actual oils. There might be a little of the pure natural essential oil in that bottle, but there's no regulation. So like, you know, they can say it is whatever it is. When doTERRA came to the market, their entire intention was to put a completely pure essential oil. So no fillers, no synthetics, all it is. And this bottle of frankincense, all it is is frankincense essential oil. There's no, no coconut oil, no nothing else, which most companies cannot say the same, right? They put other shit in their oils to offset the cost, right? So they can make it more affordable for whatever, but they're not teaching the potency, all of those things. doTERRA not only wanted to put a pure oil on the market, they also wanted to raise the economic um, status, if you will, of people all over the world. So people who have been growing these plants generation after generation after generation and have been actually using essential or uh, producing essential oils and sourcing essential oils, not being paid for it well, doTERRA has gone in and partnered with these farmers literally all over the world. So we source our plants typically indigenously from where they grow best in nature or where the environment will support the growth of that oil, right? And then we go in and we partner with these families who literally may have been like, for instance, the people in Kenya that I worked with. They'd been growing potatoes and carrots literally for decades, as had all of the neighbors in their village because that was all the soil would produce. So they're trying to sell potatoes and carrots to each other. How do you support and raise your family on that? So doTERRA comes into this, his name was Francis and he comes in, they come in to meet Francis and say, hey, listen, would you be willing to use a small portion of your farm, very small portion of your farm to start growing these plants and we will guarantee you X amount of income. It was a big gamble for him, just like it was a really big gamble for me to make a decision to start a business with doTERRA. I didn't know what was to be expected. I had to fully trust, just like this guy had to fully trust, okay, I'll try it. So he used a quarter of his farmland to start growing tea tree. And 
when it uh, when they harvested it and doTERRA bought all of it, he was like, damn, I just got paid a lot of money really quick. A lot better, right, than what he had been. He could buy his kids' shoes, literally, buy his kids' shoes. And so then he did half, and then he did his full. And now he is literally the head of an entire, his whole village. All of his neighbors are all working with doTERRA now in conjunction. They are literally, we call it our co-impact sourcing model. And it's what doTERRA's entire business is built on. It's not about just like having an oil to put on your pimple or make your wrinkles go away. This isn't what this is about. The depth of this company and the healing that it's providing to individuals and families around the world is unheard of. And, and what I see in consumers is that we're so cynical. People just don't believe that that kind of goodness can happen in the world. I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. yeah. Firsthand. And my, my peers, I mean, this isn't, Unique, I've only gotten to go on one co back sourcing trip so far. You know, I cannot wait. Like, I can't wait. I want to go to Brazil. I want to go to Guatemala. All of these different places where we're sourcing plants from and meet farmers and families and connect with people. I'm connected with a people, a tribe of people in doTERRA who are all committed to raising the vibration and the healing in this world. And that is dope. That's and that. I get to make yeah. a living doing it and serve the world it's pretty and good so how does someone like if they want to get involved with what you're doing if they hear what you're saying and they're like wow i want to learn more i'd like to get involved with her i'd like to meet this person you know how does someone do that how do we how does someone connect with you to to learn more or to possibly you know be someone that that is is on the same path that you're on yeah. so i mean my website is my name becky rue.com so it's b-e-c-k-i-r-u-h.com has a lot of my story and it's got information about doTERRA and how to get started with doTERRA also. Um, so that's the most direct way. It's got a direct link to contact me directly. And I work with the people who contact me through that uh, website, honestly, until, you know, we kind of figure out what you're looking to do. That's the easiest way, but probably from a social standpoint, I mean, I'm definitely on Instagram. I'm not super active on it at this point. I'm probably have more of a community on Facebook. So either Facebook, Instagram, send me a message, send me an email, smoke signals. I always respond to those. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> but that's probably the best way to, to reach out. I mean, it's, um, I have a team of people literally all over the world that are helping other people get started, whether it's using their um, oils for their personal physical health or emotional health, or whether they're interested in the business opportunity. I tend to work more these days with people who are interested in the business because I really, really love, I mean, the business has changed my, all of these things have changed my life. But people who are interested in elevating a large number of people's um, lives, to me, those are the people that I tend to work with more directly. Um, but I have a great community of, of support people and always kind of match and pair people based on their energy and location and desires and all of those things. So, so I want to ask you uh, one thing too before um, it is it, like so when you. Now that you've culminated all the information that you have in your life and the experience that you're living, right, to where you are, and we sort of hit on this, you know, as far as there's always more learning to do and there's always more things, um, at the level that you're at right now with all of the information that you've got, all the people that you've met in your life that make you who you are, um, what is next for you? What do you see for yourself that you're excited about? And where is this path, uh, you know, what kind of direction do you feel like this path is for you? This is, um, this is really what I've been spending the last year of my life breathing into, truth be told. I mean, you know, I, I will always be connected to doTERRA and I will always be teaching people how to use the oils and build businesses with the oils. Um, so that is kind of building the foundational uh, framework, if you will, of helping people learn how to do that in a self-paced way is kind of what, what my project is right now, because I've historically worked with people individually. Energetically, it takes a ton of time and a ton of, of energy to work with individuals. And so right now, what I'm doing is kind of working on foundational pieces to help people still get my voice in my education or in my experience for sure. Um, but with a little bit more self-paced that they can just kind of guide themselves through that. So 
that is what I'm working on right now. And, and you and I kind of both made mention of this. I've always been a writer at heart. There's no question. I mean, I, um, I'm also, I've also discovered that I'm a little bit more introverted than I thought. I've always thought I was an extrovert. I've always been way out there. And, and so this ties into what's next for me is like really learning how to create the next chapter of my life in a way that honors the space and the quiet that I, I desire and that I crave. And, um, and I've always wanted to write. I mean, I love connecting with people. I love connecting the truth. I mean, there's so much, we all have stories, right? And there's so much um, kind of, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's true. Just a ton of trauma in this world and people that are not um, even aware of it you know, and it's a lot of the trauma and old pain and old family stories and all of that stuff that we're so afraid culturally to look at. Um, the, the fact that I have and continue to do the work around that, to me, that is freedom. And if I can help even just one person, you know, through the work that I do, find their own path to freedom and the courage to look at some of the shit that's happened in the past to, to let go and to heal from that and to do the work that's necessary to, to really create a free path forward. That's where my passion is. And so I know I will be, um, <laughs> I know I will be speaking and writing a lot more publicly around a lot of things that may not seem directly associated with doTERRA, but to me, the foundation of everything that I do is how I feed my body, how I move my body, what I put into my body. And um, all it's of like the that toolbox that you're talking about, you know, doTERRA is, is, is a lot of tools to have in your toolbox, you know, to, 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 to go about your day with and to build upon in your life. And, and I think that one of the things that you sort of shared with me too, is that, you know, it's, it's a building process as well. You know, when you, when you continue to use these oils and they, be, they begin to be in you and that, you know, you slowly get them in and slowly get them in. So the efficacy can be even more and more once you continue on a regular basis to use some of them. And just like, you know, anything else, you can't achieve anything. You can't learn a martial art or how to do yoga or anything really, unless you begin to practice it every day. Even if you're a barista, you know, on a coffee shop, well, until you get, you know, you don't start doing latte art until you get really, really good at steaming a whole lot of milk, you know, and so, you know, everything takes a process. Everything takes a beginning and, 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 you know, not being afraid to start that beginning is key. And then having a little bit of, you know, an ability to be determined enough, uh, ambitious enough um, to, to execute doing the little things every day and it becoming fun for you. I mean, I always say, if it's not fun, don't fucking do it. Right. So, but you can have fun in all of these things. And then the oils can actually help you do that because you're feeling why you're doing these things uh, is better than it would be if it wasn't, if you didn't do that. So, um, there's a lot of lot of cool things that that are that we're going to unpack in our own journeys and that that we have already. But I think you know you've actually been asked to contribute writing in uh, some very cool source material for people, uh, which is really awesome. And so I think I, I really am looking forward to that. And then uh, you know you and I are talking about maybe doing some things together in a collaborative way because we seem to have uh, different toolboxes that can work uh, with a, a larger collective of people when combining. And I think that's another cool thing is that as you start about the path of um you know focusing on gratitude focusing on your thoughts becoming aware uh, being present um building the person that you want to be in your mind using the tools around you looking for the signs uh those things uh when you begin to meet others on that path the collaboration that can happen and the the expert like the, the expediting of the, the answers that you want can happen faster when you begin to meet people who are thinking either on the same way or have more knowledge than you do in areas that you want. And that's really key is to surrounding yourself with or making sure that you get information from those who are leaders uh, and thought on that, you know, and so you being a part of the the family of podcasts that I did, you have such a unique uh, space in that with, you know, what you're offering, which are very everyday, usable, applicable, literally applicable uh, yeah. tools to help them is really, really cool. I have been so proud to watch your journey through, you know, adolescence to now. I mean, we, we have been friends for over 30 years and it's really amazing to see the growth that you've had. And the reality is, 
you're sitting on a deck in the Virgin Islands in a beautiful paradise, living the life that you want and continuing the journey of growth that you want to go after. And I think that you're beyond the place now because you've made the choices you have and had the faith that you did and the courage you did to make the moves that you've made. You're at a uh, a place where a lot of people would love to be. And I know that you're willing to give that understanding to them if they reach out to you, which is beautiful. And I think that you writing about that uh, will be key as well. And speaking about that will be key as well, because um, I think you have a beautiful existence and I love the way that you interact with people, all people. And I think that that's something that you should be very proud of the person that you are. Um, and I, and I, it's really, a, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Um, I, I love you dearly. And I know that um, hopefully we'll be doing like a part two out of this in the coming months once uh, you know, I put this book together and I'm actually going to come and spend some time uh, on your island and, uh, and, and do some things. Because I'll tell you something, spiritually and visually, that place has a fantastic energy and the people that are on sort of the same path, <laughs> there's like a tribe of them there, which is really cool. And they all have different little elements of things that they do really well. So I'm looking forward to going there and exploring a lot of people's talents of these cool areas of healing and of uh, growth. Um, I want to give you an opportunity just kind of to, to say anything that you want to to those who may listen to you uh, that, that may get some, some you know, benefit out of, uh, you know, I just don't want you to leave anything on the table before, uh, you know, <clears throat> we say goodbye for the moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I'm definitely always down for a round two. We cannot wait to have your energy on this island. <laughs> I think it's it's a medicine in a um, in a way that I can't describe, you know, and and so we're excited. I'm excited about that for sure. The one thing I do want to say is you kind of were making mention of of um, the importance of you didn't say this, but this is how I heard it is the importance of being a student, and and that is how I journey through life. I am always reading. I'm always listening to podcasts. I'm always finding new teachers. I'm always finding tribes that inspire me and listening and connecting. And, and I will say, you know, to me, this is the thing is that like we all, there are so many resources from whether it's a book or, you know, Gaia or daily ohm or like aubrey marcus you know i'm on an aubrey marcus train i'm part of the community every day actually so yeah. got, we'll have a lot to talk about once i'm done with that but yeah <laughs> definitely i'm part of a community right now called fit for service that aubrey marcus is an incredible and brilliant podcaster and he's really just a he's a fucking warrior i mean he's a, a spiritual thought leader for sure but it's um what's so beautiful is he's calling together this whole, you know, tribe of people who are all interested in the personal growth and development and healing and also plant medicine and really bringing information and awareness around what plant medicine can do from a healing perspective and being part of, of communities like this. doTERRA was an initial one. I actually started years ago in a recovery community. So I feel like there is such an important part of community that we are lacking and the thing that's so we as a as a collective and as a culture yeah, yeah. Are lacking and what's so interesting to me is that everybody is called to a community like there are, there's a tribe of people that you're like oh those people are pretty fucking dope i would love to hang out with those people or i think you know this person who's reading writing this book or whatever to me the importance of including i tell my team all the time we self-select on this journey I chose, nobody invited me to come enroll in integrative nutrition and become a holistic health coach. Nobody invited me to come start a business with doTERRA. Nobody was like, oh, Becky, come do, like, you're not going to get recruited. You're going to self-select. And so that to me is really important is, is finding a community. It doesn't have to be your forever community, right? Like we learn bits and pieces. It doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. And I think that's one of the things that has been the most supportive in my whole process and my whole journey. And it's like, whether it's an essential oil community or a yoga community or a sober community or a whatever the hell kind of community <laughs> you feel called to get connected because we're not here to do this work alone. And that's what I know. So I love you, Dusty, so much. I'm so, so grateful 
that we got to spend time together and for the opportunity just to chat with you like this. I love you. Thank you so much for taking your time to do it. Um, I know that uh, you have all that beauty to enjoy today, so I won't keep you much longer, but uh, I really do, really do appreciate it. I love you more than you know. And uh, I look forward to doing a part two uh, series with you where we kind of uh, develop on some of the things we talked about today. Um, thank you. And uh, I guess we'll jump off here, but uh, until the next time, love. Thank you, love. Have a good day. Bye.